I'm going to show you exactly how you can start making better AI characters than 99% of people. Because after testing pretty much every method out there to create consistent characters, the same problems kept coming up over and over again. Yes, we have a ton of AI tools right now that can generate and edit images. And technically, they can give you a decent level of consistency. But in reality, it just doesn't work as good as it sounds. You're stuck hunting for that one perfect reference image. Then you have to keep feeding it back into the tool every single time you want to create something new. And the moment you want to change anything, like the pose, clothing, or the environment, you're back to re-explaining which image to use and how to use it. It works, but it's annoying. And I'm not even mentioning what happens when you try to put multiple characters in the same scene. That's a whole other nightmare. But after all this time struggling with those other methods, I came across an update that completely changed the way this whole setup works. It made consistent characters by far the easiest and most efficient they've ever been. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create consistent characters from scratch, how to create multiple of them, and make them interact across images in the easiest easiest way possible. And finally, we will take all of that and turn it into a realistic, high quality AI video. Now, the tool we are going to be using to create our consistent characters is called OpenArt. The reason we are using OpenArt is because they just updated their character feature and made it significantly better. Among the things they updated is a way easier to use and navigate interface, much better training for your characters, the ability to freely select the models you are using and resolution that goes as high as 4K amongst tons and tons of other features. This means you now have full control over how your characters look and behave across different generations without the usual limitations. So with that being said, let's jump right into the main interface. And if you want to follow along with this tutorial, I have left a link to OpenArt down below. Once inside the main interface, we want to go ahead and click over to the left where it says character. Here you will find your main character dashboard. If you already have characters in OpenArt, you are actually able to upgrade any of those to this new version. But if you do not have any, you can create one in two different ways. The first option is to start with an image. Here you are prompted to upload between one and four images, one that is required and three extra that will help the model better understand your character from different angles. The second option is to start with a description. Here you can just write the exact prompt of your character and select the model that it will use. OpenArt's default model is going to be the one that was used in the previous version. This one just allows you to use different styles like photorealistic, digital art, anime, 3D, Pixar, fantasy, and RPG. Or you can select any of the other top models out there and you will still have the option to create them in different styles. This gives you a lot more flexibility depending on the type of content you are creating. So let's go ahead and test out Nano Banana Pro. This is the model that I think works the best. I'm going to write this prompt right here, a natural portrait shot of an Asian woman in her 20s. She looks like a 20 year old Gen Z influencer, beautiful, natural looking with professional studio lighting. Once we have everything here, we want to go ahead and select our style. I am going to go with photorealistic for this one and then I am going to click generate. Open art will give us four different versions of our character and we can select the one that we like the best or regenerate them if none of them feel right. But I am actually pretty happy with the one in the top left. So I am going to go ahead and click that one and click on build my character. Once that is done, it is going to give us four different images so that we can see the results the model is going to be trained on. These are the front view, the close up view, the full body view and the back view. This is important because it ensures your character stays consistent from every angle, which is exactly what you need when placing them in different scenes later. Once they are all generated, you have the option to either regenerate all of them or just regenerate the ones you are not happy with. And once everything looks good, you want to go ahead and click looks good. Finally, you want to add a name and a backstory to your character. The backstory is optional, but I recommend adding it if you have the time. It will give the AI more context about who the character is, and it will be able to generate images that better fit what you have imagined. I'm going to call mine Robin and write this for the backstory. Robin is a 20 year old influencer. She is very interested in sports and skiing and is really passionate about that. She doesn't have a lot of personal life and she dedicates a lot of it to her skiing career. Then click here and this will save your character ready for you to use. Now, before we jump into the actual generation interface, I'm going to go ahead and create another character. But this time I am going to start with an image instead of a description. I actually have four images prepared, so I will upload my primary image right here. Then I am going to upload an image of her looking slightly towards the left, one looking towards the right, and finally an image of her from the back. Finally, I'll call her Layla and give her a short backstory. The reason I am creating a second character is that later on, we are going to make them interact with each other inside the same scene. So now we have both of our characters generated. Let's jump into our first character and check out the interface. To do that, you want to click on this button that says create, and here you will have the full interface available to you. At the top, this is where you can select or switch between your characters. And if you click on add character, this is where you will be able to add your other characters as well, which is what we will do in just a moment. Next up, you have the prompt section, and this is probably the most useful part in here. This is where you describe what you want your character to be doing, where they are, and what they are wearing. Below that, you have the option to upload reference 
reference images. And the coolest thing is that whenever you reference them in your prompt, it will actually bring up the entire image and you will be able to tag it directly. I will show you exactly how this works in just a second. Then you have the output size selection. So you can choose between various different output sizes and go as high as 4K resolution. This is great if you are creating content for platforms that require high quality visuals, or if you just want your images to look as sharp as possible. And finally, you have the ability to select whatever model you prefer to use, whether it is Nano Banana Pro, Nano Banana, or Seadream. But I usually just leave it on auto so that the AI can decide for itself what model works best for the prompt. Okay, so now you know how the entire interface works. Let us go ahead and generate our first image. But quickly before that, I'm going to click on add character and add the second character that I created, which is Layla. Now I have both Robin and Layla ready to use. For the prompt, I'm going to start off by writing at Robin and at Layla at the ski center, standing on the top of the ski mountain at image number one. And here I have this image of the ski center that I want them to be at. So I will upload that as image number one. They are posing for a photo together. Then I also want to give them two different outfits. So I am going to write at Robin is wearing this ski outfit. And then I am going to attach this image right here and write at image two. Then I am going to write while that Layla is wearing this one and attach a new image and write at image three. Now I'm going to select 4K for quality and click generate. And there we go. We have four images with our characters staying perfectly intact, wearing the exact outfits that we gave them. And we literally made this in seconds. This is insanely cool and a really good result, not only because of the quality, but also because of how easy this was to use. You did not have to re-explain who the characters are. You did not have to paste in reference images over and over again. You just tag them, describe what you wanted, and it worked. But if you thought that this is the extent of the character tool inside OpenArt, you are very much mistaken. For this next example, I am going to quickly remove Layla and just work with Robin. I am going to write this prompt. Robin is going down the ski mountain at high speed wearing this outfit and in this pose right here. She is going extremely fast and the wind is hitting her face, but she is nevertheless happy. The weather outside is sunny. Now I'm going to attach the image for the outfit. It is going to be the same pink ski outfit from before. But for the pose, I want to do something different. I am going to click on one of the images fields and here I am going to click on 3D editor. This will bring up a 3D editor that we can now use to change the position of our character. You can move and adjust the body however you like and it is going to very closely replicate that exact pose to create an image that looks super realistic. This means you are no longer limited to whatever poses you can find online. You can create exactly what you have in mind. So I am going to start off by selecting this sprinting animation from the pose library. Then I am going to turn the camera slightly around, bring the second leg up and the arm down so that she looks like she she is in this crouch down position as if she is going down on her skis. The next thing you want to do is position your camera in the exact way that you want the photo to be taken from. This is going to be really closely replicated in the final image. So take your time and position the camera exactly how you want it. And when everything looks perfect, you want to click update pose. This will instantly save it and bring it up as a reference image. Now, as you probably saw, there is a lot of customization here. You can select different body types, different genders, and different pre-made poses. So you can use this for a lot of different things and really get the positioning right on whatever character you are working with. But with that said, let us go ahead and reference our 3D image in the prompt. I am going to make sure everything is good. And here, I actually want to use the Nano Banana Pro model specifically because I want this image to turn out really good. So I am going to switch it from Auto to Nano Banana Pro. Then I am going to click Create. And here is the result. You can clearly see that the image that came out matches the position we set our character in. The pose is exactly what we created in the 3D editor. The character looks consistent and the overall image is looking really good. Now, the final cool feature I want to show you inside here is the position feature. For the prompt, I'm going to write, Robin is skating on an empty frozen lake alone in this exact place. She is wearing winter clothes. For the image, I'm going to click on position and upload an image of this empty frozen lake that I have right here. Once the image is uploaded, you will get this little square showing up and you can move it freely across the entire image. You can also change how small or big it is. So if I position my rectangle right over here, this will be the exact place where my character will show up in the final image. This gives you precise control over composition, which is especially useful when you want your character placed in a very specific part of the scene. I'm going to click save placement and this will show up as a reference image. Then I will just just reference this image in my prompt after I have described where she is. I am going to select Nano Banana Pro for the model, click create, and there you have it. She is in the exact same place as where we positioned her, still looking like our exact character, wearing winter clothes, and the image is high quality and looks great. Now that we know the basics and the most powerful features of the character tool inside OpenArt, let's actually create something and make a video out of it. For this, I'm going to take this image of our character going down the mountain that we created earlier and use it as my starting frame. The video I want to create is Robin going down the mountain on her skis, then she stops, and then she looks 
looks towards the camera. And throughout the whole video, she is gonna stay perfectly consistent. But first I need to create an end frame. So I'm going to write this prompt. Robin is standing at the bottom of the ski tracks after she just got off the mountain at image number one. I am including the starting frame as a reference so that the AI has context of where our character is and what she has been doing. This helps keep the two images visually connected. I am also going to write super happy because I want this to feel like an upbeat, energetic video. And then finally, so that the AI does not get inconsistent with the clothing, I'm also going to write, she is wearing these exact clothes and I'm going to reattach the image of her outfit and write at image two. Now with that done, I'm going to make sure everything is set to the best quality. I'm going to select Nano Banana Pro for the model, increase the number of images to four and click create. And here we have a couple of good ones. I really like this one. It actually has her cheeks red, which makes it look a little bit more natural and cold weather appropriate. So I am going to go ahead and download this image. Now we have both of our images ready, the starting frame and the end frame. We are going to switch over to the video mode on the left side right here. And out of all the options, we want to select image to video. Now we want to make sure we select the correct type of model. What we are looking for is one that has the end frame tag on it. This is important because it allows you to define both where the video starts and where it ends, giving you much more control over the final result. A couple of good ones I can recommend are Google VO 3.1, Kling 2.6, and Pixverse. All of them get solid results with end frame videos. For this one, I'm going to use Kling 2.6. I'm going to make sure that my duration is set to 10 seconds and that I have the best quality mode selected. Then I can upload both of my images. I'm going to upload the first one where our character is going down the mountain as my starting frame and the one of her standing at the bottom as my end frame. Finally, I'm going to make sure everything looks good, nothing is wrong, and I'm going to click create. And here is the result. In my opinion, this video came out looking really cool. Our character stays perfectly consistent throughout the entire video and the final result looks amazing. One more thing you can do is have your character as a reference image in the element to video option. This way you can generate videos with your character without needing to start with an image. And you can even use them as characters in the story feature, or you can make longer videos featuring your character. So now you know exactly how the new open art consistent character feature works, and you know how to use all of its most powerful features. You can create characters from scratch using just a description, add multiple characters and use them simultaneously in one image. And you can take any image you create and turn it into a fully consistent video. What this means is that you no longer need to to go back and forth with your generator, trying to get the exact positioning of your character right. You no longer have to constantly regenerate the same image over and over again, just to get your character to understand whatever reference image you included in the prompt. Because here, you actually have the ability to tag your images directly, so the AI knows exactly what you are referring to in that exact moment. And that means you are getting the best possible experience when it comes to using AI for consistent characters. All of this is thanks to OpenArt. OpenArt is a tool that makes this feature possible, and they are constantly working on releasing the best and most powerful features for creators like you. So if you want to start using consistent characters and create images and videos just like the ones we made today, go ahead and sign up to OpenArt using my link down in the description below. And I will see you guys in the next one.